wet your hands with water. Apply soap, rub your hands palm to palm and wash the backs of both hands and in between your fingers. Then palm to palm with fingers interlocked. Clasp your hands together and rub and then clean around the thumbs too. Rub your fingertips in the palms of your hands and finish off with the wrists. Rinse your hands really well with water and dry them thoroughly with a paper towel. Use the towel to turn off the tap. Your hands are now clean. Good morning students. I hope you and your family are good. Today we are going to read and understand the third chapter of your English book Hornbill. The chapter name is Discovering Tut. The saga continues. It's written by A. R. Williams and this chapter is about the last hair of the powerful Pharaoh family. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Tut is a short name. It was also known as Tutankhamun. He died at very young age, just after ruling for nine years. He died in a mysterious way. So basically in this chapter we're going to find out most of the things, most of the facts given by the scientist, written by the writer, that what exactly had happened to this young king. So to find out things, let's just read through the paragraphs. I will explain you the paragraph as well as I will tell you the difficult words and meanings. He was just a teenager when he died, the last heir of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. He was led to rest laden with gold and eventually forgot. Hair, H E I R, um, like next king, in other word, word you can say successor. And the word led to rest means led to grave or buried. So, this about Tut, who was quite young. Teenager means not adult, so he was like boy. He belonged to a very powerful family, Pharaoh family, who ruled the Egypt for centuries. And when he died, he was led to rest laden with gold and eventually finally forgotten. Laden with gold, loaded with gold means uh, like uh, so many uh, gold ornaments and other things. Since the discovery of his tomb in 1922 the modern world has speculated about what happened to him with murder being the most extreme possibility now leaving his tomb for the first time in almost 80 years that was undergone a CT scan that offers new clues about his life and death and provides precise data for an accurate forensic reconstruction of the boyish pharaoh forensic examine dead body boyish looking like boy and CT scan I'm sure you must have heard this uh, medical terminology this is uh, basically a machine medical test 
uh, where it produces a picture of the inside of a person's body on a computer screen. So, since his body, his tomb was found in 1922, the modern world started talking about his death because they were surprised to know that uh, how come a young king died. So what they guessed, speculated means guessed. So their guessing was he could have died and the reason could be being murdered. So now Obviously, after 80 years since his tomb was found, he was going through the city scan to find out clues about his life and death. An angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as King Tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient Egyptian cemetery known as the Valley of the Kings. Dark pallid clouds had scudded across the desert sky all day and now were veiling the stars in casket grey. Casket grey? Casket is a kind of box and uh, scudded across. Here it means moved quickly dark bellied dark and bulging and veiling means v e i l i n g veiling means covering that's egyptian symmetry symmetry is where it was buried where it was buried um, it's kind of a graveyard that was also known as Valley of the Kings. So what happened? As King Tut's body was taken from his grave, that was also known as Valleys of the King, an ancient Egyptian cemetery. Dark clouds moved quickly across the desert. And a strange and unnatural wind started blowing. So those clouds moved quickly across the desert all day long and later they even covered the stars. It was 6 p.m. on 5th January 2005 the world's most famous mummy gleaded head first into a city scanner brought here to probe the lingering medical mysteries of the little understood young ruler who died more than 3,300 years ago. So on January 5th, 2005, at 6 p.m., King Tut's mummy, which is the world's most famous mummy, I would say, that was placed in the city scanner to find out, to investigate the mystery behind his death which had occurred or happened more than 3,300 years ago. All afternoon the usual line of tourists from around the world had descended into the cramped, cramped narrow, cramped rock cut tomb some 26 feet underground to pay their respects. They gazed at the murals, gazed means looking intently, and murals, the paintings on the walls of the burial chamber and peered, peered means uh, like uh, looking closely at Turks gilded face. Gilded means like um, um, a thin 
cover thin cover a coated with gold the most striking features of his mummy shaped outer coffin lid some visitors read from guide books in a whisper others stood silently perhaps pondering to its untimely death in his late teens or wondering with a shiver if the pharaoh's curse death or misfortune falling upon those who disturbed him was really true uh, pondering means thinking deeply so that day all afternoon tourist from around the world had descended descended means because his tomb was underground so descended obviously when you uh, you know go inside and go deeper so going deeper uh, is called descending yeah so had descended into that cramped rock cut tomb so that tomb was narrow and it was rock cut means they have to cut the rocks to reach to the tomb and that was somewhere uh, 26 feet underground so these tourists had come to pay their respects to who to tat they gazed at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber and peered at tut's gilded face so these tourists they looked intently at the murals on the on those paintings on the wall of the burial chamber of that you know inside of that tomb and peered and looked closely that's gilded face here gilded face uh, is referring to the outer thing of that uh, mummy which was covered with gold it was painted or covered with thin gold and some visitors uh, read from guide books in a whisper others stood silently perhaps pondering that's untimely death in his late teens so all those all those visitors were some of them were looking uh, in the uh, guide books and talking to each other in very low tone whispering and uh, others stood silently uh, perhaps pondering thinking that what could have happened to this young king they were thinking about the death untimely death of the king death or misfortune falling upon those who disturb him was really true wondering with a shiver if the pharaoh's curse death or misfortune falling upon those who disturb him was really true so they were also thinking that what if it was correct that whoever disturbed a pharaoh's mummy a tomb the curse will come upon them so they were trying to find out to by talking whispering to each other whether it could be true the mummy is in very bad condition because of what carter did in the 1920s said zahi hawas secretary general of egypt's supreme council of antiquities as he leaned over the body for a long first look so here now a description about that uh, uh, mummy of coffin who said this uh, secretary general of egypt zahi hawas who leaned over the body to have a close look he said that the mummy was in very bad condition because of what the british archaeologist archaeologist who um, you know do 
study on the ancient things uh, just, just like for example finding out uh, about pyramids and uh, treasures etc so there was a british archaeologist whose name was howard carter so zahi hawats was saying that uh, what british archaeologist howard carter did to the mummy in the 1920s so what he had done let's see the british archaeologist who in 1922 discovered dirt's tomb after years of futile searching it contains the hastily ransacked in antiquity was surprisingly complete they remain the richest royal collection ever found and have become part of the pharaoh's legend stunning artifacts in gold their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection caused a sensation at the time of the discovery and is still get the most attention but tut was also buried with everyday things he would want in the afterlight life board games a bronze razor linen undergarments cases of food and wine so the archaeologist whose name was Howard Carter he discovered king tut's tomb in 1922 after a long search the the treasures of tut had been explored earlier also but it was quite surprisingly they were complete the treasure which was found at tut's grave is said a known richest till date and now people say that has been known as the pharaoh's legend what it has it has so many things they are made of gold they are eternally beautiful as good as new such artifacts is still get attention and uh, in ancient time especially in egypt what uh, the customer tradition was that uh, whenever a pharaoh died they put their uh, like um, belongings also with the body so tut was also buried with things of daily use like a, a razor made of bronze games and the um, garments under garments linen under garments and some boxes of food and wine so it was believed that uh, he could use it in the next life after months of carefully recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures carter began investigating his three nested coffins opening the first he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves wild celery lotus petals and cornflowers the faded evidence of a burial in march or april when he finally reached the mummy though he ran into trouble the ritual resins had hardened cementing tut to the bottom of his solid gold coffin no amount of legitimate force could move them carter wrote later later what was to be done so here the word resins mean uh, sticky substances and uh, 
these things the garlands of willow and olive leaves uh, wild celery lotus petals and corn flowers these are just uh, you know like uh, uh, willow is a plant olive leaves olive leaves uh, wild celery is a wild plant and lotus petals petals of lotus flower and corn flowers and the word adorned uh, means here decorated so carter that uh, archaeologist he took few months to note down what the treasures found in turk's grave so you can imagine that how much it was then he began to investigate the three coffins which were nested one in another nested three nested coffins so you know like uh, there were layers of coffins coffins is a, a box where dead bodies are kept uh, you must have seen uh, the ritual of uh, uh, christian people they bury dead bodies in a um, coffin so this coffin was nested one in another so there were basically three coffins in the first coffin he found a piece of cloth with garlands of willow olive leaves wild celery and the petals of lotus flower and corn flower and what he guessed because these things these flowers and plants were found especially in the months of march and march or april so he guessed that he would have died the tuck would have died in month of either march or april and when he reached the third coffin now he was surprised and uh, it was a big problem for him the because the body was like is stuck to the resins resins i uh, told you the sticky substances so what had happened there were some uh, sticky substances in that coffin where the body was so it, the body was basically is stuck to the coffin to the third coffin and that was cemented and it had stuck to the bottom of the coffin uh, which was made of gold so now carter was wondering what to do next because if he obviously he had to uh, take out the body somehow and uh, he could not use much force to separate the two the coffin and the body it could be broken apart the sun can be down like a hammer this far south in egypt and carter tried to use it to loosen the resins for several hours he set the mummy outside in blazing sunshine that heated it to 149 degrees fahrenheit nothing burst he reported with scientific detachment that the consolidated material had to be uh, chiseled away from the beneath the limbs and trunk before it was possible to raise the king's remains so now thinking what to do to separate the coffin and the body he thought that uh, uh, 
the heat of the sunshine could help him because uh, in Egypt it's always too much hot outside so what he did he tried to loosen the resins by keeping the body in the hot sun and he kept the mummy he kept the body with the coffin in, uh, in 149 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours but nothing happened so he reported that chisel could be used to cut down the mummy from the limbs and the trunk so that Turk's body could be taken out of the coffin. So in his defense Carter really had little choice. If he hadn't cut the mummy free, thieves most certainly would have circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold. In Tut's time, the royals were fabulously wealthy and they thought or hoped they could take their riches uh, with them. For his journey, journey to the Great Beyond, King Tut was lavished with the glittering goods, precious collars, inlaid necklaces and bracelets, ring amulets, uh, ceremonial apron, sandals, sheaths for his fingers and toes, and the now iconic inner coffin and mask, all of pure gold. To separate Tut from his adornments, Carter's men removed the mummy's head and severed nearly every major joint. Once they had finished, they reassembled the remains on a layer of sand in a wooden box with padding that concealed the damage the bed where Tut now rests. So it was said, according to that man, the archaeologist uh, Carter, he said that he had no choice and to cut the mummy and what he said also that if he hadn't done that if he hadn't cut the mummy the thieves would have removed the gold from the tomb and would have looted it looted is stolen so during Tut's time, the royal people, the king, were very rich and they had a belief that they could take things like this, the wealth, you know, like uh, gold and uh, the belongings, they could take along with them for their life after death. So that's why Tut was given precious collars, necklaces with decorative patterns, bracelets, rings, amulets. Amulets is like uh, here it's called tabij and uh, ceremonial aprons, sandals, sheets for fingers and toes and now an iconic inner coffin and a mask. So uh, thinking what to do and he had no choice so he asked his men, Carter asked his men to remove his head and every joint of his body. So once they finished, once they done, they taken the obviously the parts, the limbs of the mummy out of the coffin and they reassembled the remains in the wooden box with 
paddle filled with a layer of sand to conceal to hide the damage so now it was his new coffin new resting place that was all for today and uh, like i said earlier if you have any doubt you can always contact to me thank you very much have a good day ahead bye bye